If we didn't provide the user a way to interact with our application, we'd simply be showing them content on the screen, and that's it. We wouldn't give them a way to go further into an application, to scroll content in an application, to choose menu items that then take us even further in an application. Basically, we'd be showing them an image. So in this movie, we'll learn how to handle the most basic of interactions, the tap event. In front of us is our menu screen as we've created it so far. We'll be adding a text menu item at the bottom that will eventually allow us to take the user to the inventory of delicious donuts that Donut Mogul, our fictional company, makes. We'll head to the code, and in the main.lua file of our project, we'll head to the code where we just created title text, which is here at line 42. Just underneath title text.alpha, we'll make some new space, and we'll create a new text object that will serve as our menu item. We'll start by creating a variable called inventory text, and we'll create a new text object, display dot new text, and the text that we'll display to the user will be our donuts. Okay, the second and third arguments we'll ignore. The fourth argument will be font, and remember that we set that earlier at line 41, and then the size of this text will be 24 pixels. Next thing we'll do is we'll insert it into the title group just after the title text is inserted. We'll create a new line and type title group colon insert, then within the parentheses inventory text. And now that the inventory text object is within our title group, we need to position it. So just underneath the positioning of title text, we'll position the inventory text. So inventory text dot y equals title text dot y. So here we're aligning the y with the y value of our title text, plus inventory text dot height. So the height of this text object plus 36. So we're setting the height of the inventory text minimally to the height of the title text plus the height of the inventory text itself, and then 36 additional pixels. Save it and head to the simulator and refresh. And there our donuts are. It looks a little strange if our donuts is there before the donut has faded in and the text has faded in. So let's go back. Let's set the initial alpha of inventory text to zero. So inventory text dot alpha equals zero. And then we'll head to the transition to function that is fading the title text in. And on complete, we will set the alpha to one. So inventory text dot alpha equals one. Okay, head back to the simulator and refresh. And as soon as the title text is done fading in, then the menu text appears. So now we need to implement the tap event so that when we tap our donuts, we'll get some sort of response. We're not going to implement just yet heading into the new scene. We'll do that later in the course. Here, we'll just learn how to implement a tap event when you tap a display object. So there are a few different ways of handling a tap event. The first thing that we need to do is we need to add an event listener to listen for the tap event. So we'll head to the bottom of the code and we'll type the following, inventory text colon add event listener. Open and close parentheses. And for the first argument, it will be the event that we're listening for, which is the tap event. So as a string, tap. Now this is the basic way you would listen for any particular type of event. You'd have an object, colon, and then add event listener, and parentheses. Then, as a string, the event that you wanted to listen for. So what would change here would be the object that would be listening, which is the first part of this, the inventory text, and then the event you're going to listen for, which is the string that we just typed here, which is tap. It could be touch, it could be accelerometer events. All of the syntax is the same for listening to events. The other part of this particular function is a second argument that represents the function that will fire when we actually hear a tap event. And we're not actually hearing it, instead we're handling it. That's the more proper term. We're going to create a separate function, but I'll also show you how to create an anonymous function and do a few other things because it's pretty flexible. We'll create a function called onTap, and then above this particular line, new space, and type local function on tap, and within parentheses type e, and that's going to be representative of the event object that comes with the event. And then after this end, and then within this function, we'll type print, and then a string tapped. Now let's head to the simulator, and let's bring the terminal up as well. I'll clear the terminal, 
and then head to the simulator and refresh. So now when I tap on our donuts, take a look at the terminal window, and we get tapped. So it's calling the on tap function. Now another way to have implemented this would be to delete on tap from the second argument and type function e and then end. And so here we're creating an anonymous function in place and then print tapped. And we'll do it again. Another way to do this would be to implement the function to fire on the object that's listening. This is actually my preferred method most of the time for implementing events whereby an object is listening for an event. So here's what I'll do. I'll delete this anonymous function and I'll type inventory text. Now that looks a bit strange because inventory text is listening for the tap event and then it's going to basically call itself. Well, how does it do that? The way that it does that is we will type function inventory text colon tap. So what comes after the colon would be the event that you're listening for. So here it's tap, so it'd be colon tap. If you were listening for touch, it would be colon touch. Then parentheses E and end. So within this, again, print tapped. So we refresh, let's bring the terminal up. And once again, we get tapped. The reason why this is pretty convenient is that we can access the inventory text object by using the keyword self. So for instance, if we wanted to change the text of this object when we tap it, we could do the following, self.text equals, and then dot 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 are yummy. Okay, head back to the Corona simulator, bring the terminal up, refresh. And now when we tap our donuts, the text changes. And the way that it changes is we use the self keyword, which refers to the inventory text object. And then we use the dot text property because it is a text object to change that text. Now, if we did not use a function on the inventory text object like we are here, we wouldn't be able to use the self keyword. So that's what's critical here about the colon is that the colon allows us to declare a function on an object and then within that function to use the self keyword to refer to the object in a very convenient way. That's a bit of a digression from the core concept here that we're getting across, which is that to handle tap events or any particular type of event, first, you're going to listen for the event. So here on line 96, the inventory text object is listening for the tap event, which is there in string. And then you need to denote some kind of function that's going to handle the event. The first way we did it, we created a separate function called onTap. The second way we did it was we implemented a function in place, an anonymous function. And the third way here is that we actually let the object that was listening handle the event itself. So there at line 92, we created function inventory text colon and then the event we were listening for, which here is tap. And doing this allowed us to use the self keyword within the function to refer to the object more conveniently. Now, if you're curious as to what this E is in the parentheses, that's the event object that actually has a lot of different data. We're going to look at that when we talk about handling complex touch interactions.